uh, I guess, do stead uh, microscopy, stimulated emission depletion microscopy on nanometer sized diamonds. Um, the, the purpose is, uh, I guess, ultimately to use these diamonds primarily as fluorescent markers for um, uh, doing microscopy on different biological systems, maybe primarily neurons and uh, neuronal tissue. Um, and then maybe in the further future, um, also combine that with um, uh, s sort of electron spin resonance techniques to, to do local magnetic field sensing in, in neural systems. And so the, the reason for using the, this uh, trestles TISAF, uh, I guess, is uh, to generate the, um, the donut-shaped mode that we'll use to um, deplete the fluorescence from the, the nitrogen vacancy centers in the nanodiamond, um, uh, sort of according to standard uh, simulated emission depletion microscopy techniques. That's, that's so the, the, I guess, we're primarily interested in, in using nanodiamonds that have um, nitrogen vacancy defects. Um, we have other sort of uh, defects that we're interested in as well for doing other projects in addition to the STED project. Um, so one of the things we're working on is uh, um, using nanometer sized diamonds um, which have had their surfaces functionalized so that they can bind to interesting proteins in, in neuronal tissue and uh, then exciting them with an electron beam and a scanning electron microscope and observing the photons that are emitted by the, the, the defects. Um, uh, it's called cathodoluminescence, and the idea is that um, each, each different kind of defect sort of has a, a characteristic spectrum of uh, cathodoluminescence. Nitrogen vacancies are sort of in the, in the red, um, say, 600, 700 nanometer kind of range, um, but it's also possible to obtain uh, nanodiamonds with defects that are in the green, 500-ish nanometers, and uh, also quite bright cathodoluminescence from uh, certain types of defects that are, I guess, in the blue, so 400 nanometers. And the idea is that one would uh, functionalize each of these different flavors of nanodiamonds with a, a different uh, uh, surface chemistry and then have them bind selectively to different sites and be able to, in the same image, um, learn about the concentration of different kinds of proteins at uh, a very high uh, spatial resolution. The spatial resolution would be the resolution of the electron microscope, which is a few nanometers, um, but at the same time you would have access to different colors, which you don't normally get with just an electron microscope image. So you can learn about sort of the, the function of structures in, in this image, but with very high spatial resolution. Um, it's an important goal to be able to just control the, the surface surface chemistry and, and have them bind to selective site, uh, sites selectively, um, both for state and for the cathodoluminescence. Uh, I, I think uh, the 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 stead um, microscope that are building, I think, is sort of perhaps intended to be more general. Uh, so I mean, it's nano diamonds, nitrogen vacancies, and nanometer sized diamonds are. are very good for stead because they don't bleach. Um, so most sort of fluorophores that people now use for stead microscopy, you only get a, a certain number of cycles of, of excitation and uh, emission before they undergo some oxidation or something like that and you can't see them anymore, whereas diamonds, nitrogen vacancy centers in diamonds doesn't happen. So, so diamond is a particularly nice dye to use for stead, but it's not the only dye that we could imagine using. And uh, uh, yeah, I guess the, the sort of uh, particular applications are, are still a couple steps removed, but uh, there are a couple of neuroscientists around here who are interested in doing STED for uh, you know, high resolution imaging, perhaps of uh, uh, microtubules in, in cells that are undergoing you know, mitosis or something like this uh, to study the, the statistical properties of, of self-assembly in these systems. That's one potential application. Um, also studying very small structures in like neuromuscular junctions, for instance, is another conceivable application. If we can make the diamond small enough and control the, the surfaces sufficiently well to, to bind to, to interesting sites. Um, so I think we've talked about like trying to uh, trying to map uh, acetylcholine receptors in uh, synapses, for instance, and this is 
uh, something that I think is, is hard to do with electron microscopy because they tend to get distorted when you prepare the samples, but you can imagine perhaps doing it with STED if you could make the, the markers, the diamonds or whatever, sufficiently small, uh, and we're talking like 10 nanometers or less to, to image these things. So that's one possible application. Uh, people show that the, the laser power is not too high to, uh, to do on living tissue, but I mean, because of our sort of lack of expertise dealing with cells and so forth, we would like to start with fixed tissue first. Um, uh, population is transferred to a very long-lived uh, dark state in, in the, the sort of spectrum of the nitrogen vacancy center, the, the energy structure, uh, which in principle could live as long as several seconds. And um, by utilizing that state, I think it's in principle possible to um, turn down the, the power of your stead beam to, to very low levels so that you trade away time basically for intensity. Um, and then it's, in, you know, I mean, then you can, you can have very low power levels such as probably quite compatible with biological tissue. Even with sort of conventional stead on, on you know, uh, green fluorescent protein or something like that, it's, I think, in principle possible to get reasonably good resolution without turning up the laser power so high that it, it damages the tissue. Um, I think people have shown like mm, 30 or 50-ish nanometer resolution on, on fluorescent proteins. Uh, his name is Stefan Hell. Um, he, uh, I forget, uh, he, he's in Göttingen, I think, in the Max Planck Institute in Göttingen. And I mean, he, this is basically his technology. He had the idea like 15 years ago or something and has been steadily improving it. And it's, I think, now sort of reached the point where a number of other groups are trying to, to learn how to implement it themselves. Um, stability and mechanical stability are, are pretty important, obviously, right? I mean, if you, you know, so, uh, I mean, manufacturing, I mean, it, it, I, you know, building a microscope, I think an important part of it probably is constructing it such that you don't have to realign it all the time and it's mechanically and thermally stable so that the end user doesn't really have to know what's going on inside, right? I think that's, I mean, so. So maybe you could imagine selling a kit to expert users, but uh, uh, for for the average biologist who just wants a high-resolution microscope, I think it would be you know, you'd have to make a pretty good. Uh, as far as I understand, and I, I'm not a, an expert on the history of nanodiamonds, but I, I think that th there's um, so there's basically like two broad categories of nanodiamonds, and and one is nanodiamonds that are made in detonation chambers, so people blow up like. Um, one of the ingredients is TNT, and I forget what the other one is. And basically, the, the carbon and the TNT, you know, under very high um, pressure and temperature in this pressure vessel, uh, can, over some sort of uh, short range of, of distance from the center of explosion, turn into to diamond. And so what you end up with, after you clean away all of the, the other uh, uh, explosion products, is um, a quite uniform um, in size diamond nanocrystals that are like on the order of say four to eight uh, nanometers in diameter and they're often um, agglomerated um, sort of with uh, 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 like graphite like carbon sort of uh, strongly binding groups together and the, the the primary agglomerates are probably in the order of 100 nanometers or something like that uh, and so people have shown in the last few years how it's possible to um, by a combination of you know, um, you know, very high power sonication or uh, as acid surface treatment or something like that to, to break things back up into relatively small, almost primary particles. And uh, that's, I guess, pretty exciting. Um, the other approach to making nanometer sized diamonds is starting with micron sized diamonds and, uh, and grinding them down. Um, uh, I think probably. Yeah, just sort of um, milling them until they're nanometer sized. Uh, the appeal of that is that you can, um, if you want to implant them with nitrogen vacancy centers or, or whatever, you can do the implantation at the, the stage where they're still fairly large and then do the, the milling and cleaning uh, surface treatment afterwards.
So this is our laboratory where we study or we are doing bioimaging basically. But we are doing bioimaging with a high resolution using so-called STAT technique in various configurations. And uh, what uh, another thing, what we are doing, we are using nano diamonds for uh, visualization of uh, different biological objects. And this technique allows us, I mean, potentially to do a uh, resolution with uh, super resolution, like it call it, compared to uh, optical diffraction limits. Yes. And since uh, nano diamonds, they are potentially, they are very inert material, uh, potentially it will allow to work with live biological objects. To use a I mean, trestle uh, titanium sapphire laser uh, because it has the right wavelength I mean, for pumping the nano diamonds and it's also powerful enough I mean, to get to the high resolution limit. Yes, first we'll start with working uh, in CW regime and then we'll switch to pulse.